Hello everyone, my name is Maria Sabio. I am Aldi Shramot. I am Marian Arthur Perez. I am Patricia Silva. I am Rosalind Trini R. Ellie. I am Kurt Ross M. Ebonia. I am Queen Bella Barbella. We are the guardians of our ancestors. Here to discuss about the uninvited occupants of the blankets to bodies of water in the United States rise up to three feet above the surface water. Destructive swines that are capable of eating almost everything and spread disease. A giant plant that can give someone severe blisters, scaring and even blindness when touch. These are not children's story or concepts. They are in existence. But how can such a situation exist in nature? situations are examples of invasive species, organisms that are harmful not because they are, but where they happen to be. The water hyacinth, for example, is native to tropical and subtropical South America, introduced to the U.S. as an ornament. However, in the wild it forms thick, dense mats that cover the sunlight for submerged plants and other water organisms, crowding the bodies of water and clogging waterways and intake pipes. Basically, invasive species are organisms that are not native to an ecosystem and cause harm. And these unwanted organisms are being transferred from one place to another, resulting in a catastrophic situation of fauna species living unequally. Now the question that we should be asking, are humans considered to be invasive? From hominid primates to us being homo sapiens, we introduce new things to ourselves, from craftsmanship, the industrial revolution, and the other periods. All of these lead to obtaining transportation with ease, and we migrate. The results? The rise of carbon in the atmosphere, affecting not only us, but the whole biosphere itself. As for the macroscopic view, the carbon dioxide consists of carbon atom that naturally occurs in the atmosphere. It also released into the atmosphere by animals through cellular respiration. The process of respiration is defined as the act of breeding of all biotic factors. Correlating this process to the carbon cycle as animals respire the inhalation of oxygen and the exhalation of car carbon dioxide that takes place. When plants get carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through their leaves' tiny openings called stomata is where the carbon dioxide passes. And the leaves lose, leaves lose fitting cell allows the collected dioxide to reach to all the plant cells. After the plants release the oxygen, the animals will collect the oxygen and then break down to sugar molecules and with it, the carbon dioxide will be released again into the atmosphere and the cycle will be repeated. A typical example for this cycle in the correlating given environment is the cow in a grassland. As plants collect the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it produces oxygen, then release it into the atmosphere. And the cow takes the oxygen, then exudes the molecules and release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. And in addition to that, an herbivore exclusion experiment to the environment showed that animals can affect the dynamics, the carbon dynamics, by changing the composition of a certain species in the plant community. Now the main point of photosynthesis is to take carbon dioxide from the environment and call it a new process called carbon fixation, where it turns an inorganic compound to an organic compound such as sugar molecules. This happens when 
carbon dioxide, 6 moles of carbon dioxide reacts with 6 moles of water and with the help of the light energy, it converts them into sugar, also known as C6H12O6 and 6 moles of oxygen. Through the process of redox reaction, where carbon is reduced from the charge of 4 reducing to 0, while the oxygen is oxidized from negative 2 going down to 0, and where the glucose will be used as an energy. Well, for the oxygen that has been released to the environment, it is then later consumed by animals to perform cellular respiration. It, basically, it is the reverse process of carbon fixa fixation, where glucose and oxygen reacts together to form 6 moles of carbon dioxide and 6 moles of water, and then it will create an energy for the animal. However, carbon dioxide is quite different when it comes to our bodies of water. Carbon dioxide reacts with the water molecules to form a weak acid, that's what we call the carbonic acid, which dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. From an average of 8.1, the pH of our ocean decreases, making it, more, making it more acidic than usual. Epigenetics is a study of attributes or phenotypes that do not include changes in a DNA pattern. Uh, some of the examples are about how queen and worker honeybees may look so distinct from each other despite, despite being genetically similar. Or uh, how hunger in human populations may influence the well-being and survival of the next generation and how we all arise from a single cell to end up with bodies comprising many different types of specialized cells, but all of which possess a certain gene. Uh, epigenetic processes in fauna include DNA methylation, histone modifications, and non-coding RNAs. Uh, an animal-wide analysis of epigenetic mechanisms is only achievable for DNA methylation. This transition happens in the large majority of animals, but has been overlooked in certain lineages. Epigenetics operates by attaching and removing tiny chemical tags to DNA. You may think that such tags as post-it notes that shows different genes with details on whether or not they should be turned on or turned off. The chemical tag is called metal glue and it is used to alter one of the four bases or chemical letters A, C, P, and G that compose the genetic code of the DNA. The letter that is tagged is C or cytosine and when it is altered, after methylation, it is called 5-methylcytosine. Metal groups are added to DNA by enzymes called DNA methyltransferases. In several cases, more methylated cis in the DNA of a gene result of a gene being switched off. Honeybees are perfect example on how can this happen. Despite, the queen and the workers are female and genetically similar. The explanation on how this happened lies on the royal jelly, a fluid that is fed into a certain developing larvae which results in this larvae turning into queens instead of workers. Thus, the switch between queen and workers can be flipped by the abundance of metal tags on the bee larvae's DNA. Natural grasslands are experiencing devastating disturbances caused by humans and it takes a long time for them to recover. Humans are not considered as invasive species. However, we are nearly comparable to these invaders as we are the cause of these catastrophic changes that create irreversible consequences. From pollution, destruction of natural habitats, hunting, and illegal smuggling and exploitation of animals are fine examples of our collective bonds. We even take up more green spaces to cater more homes and cities, and that is, is indeed an accurate example of our invasion. These habitats for our plants and animals need to survive as we depend on a big percentage of our resources, our needs, and necessities from it. So, what we have to do is to rehabilitate, recover, and ensure that they are well conserved. We need to be the stewards, not the assassins of our environment for the brighter future ahead of us. 